The de Havilland DH.106 Comet was the world's first commercial jet airliner. Although sales never fully recovered, the improved Comet 2 and the prototype Comet 3 culminated in the redesigned Comet 4 series which debuted in 1958 and remained in commercial service until 1981. An Echo E-160 radar unit was installed in the Comet 4's nose cone, providing search functions as well as ground and cloud mapping capabilities, and a radar interface was built into the Comet 4 cockpit along with redesigned instruments. Upgraded Avon engines were introduced on the Comet 3, and the Avon-powered Comet 4 was highly praised for its takeoff performance from high-altitude locations such as Mexico City where it was operated by Mexicana de Aviation, a major scheduled passenger air carrier. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret were guests on a special flight of the Comet on 30 June 1953 hosted by Sir Geoffrey and Lady de Havilland. In 1953, the Comet appeared to have achieved success for de Havilland. A slightly longer version of the Comet one with more powerful engines, the Comet 2, was being developed, and orders were placed by Air India, British Commonwealth Pacific Airlines, Japan Airlines, Linea Aeropostal Venezolana, and Panair do Brazil. The Comet 1 and 1A had been criticized for a lack of feel in their controls, and investigators suggested that this might have contributed to the pilot's alleged overstressing of the aircraft. Comet chief test pilot John Cunningham contended that the jetliner flew smoothly and was highly responsive in a manner consistent with other de Havilland aircraft. Just over a year later, Rome's Ciampino Airport, the site of the first Comet hull loss, was the origin of a more disastrous Comet flight. The square windows of the Comet 1 were replaced by the oval versions used on the Comet 2, which first flew in 1953, and the skin thickness was increased slightly. All production Comet 2s were also modified to alleviate the fatigue problems. A program to produce a Comet 2 with more powerful Avons was delayed. All airline customers for the Comet 3 subsequently cancelled their orders and switched to the Comet 4, which was based on the Comet 3 but with improved fuel capacity. Capital's order included 10 Comet 4As, a variant modified for short-range operations with a stretched fuselage and short wings, lacking the pinion fuel tanks of the Comet 4. The Comet 4 was ordered by two other airlines. Aerolinas Argentinas took delivery of six Comet 4s from 1959 to 1960, using them between Buenos Aires and Santiago, New York and Europe, and East African Airways received three new Comet 4s from 1960 to 1962 and operated them to the United Kingdom and to Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. The Comet 4A ordered by Capital Airlines was instead built for B as the Comet 4B, with a further fuselage stretch of 38 in and seating for 99 passengers. The last Comet 4 variant, the Comet 4C, first flew on 31 October 1959 and entered service with Mexicana in 1960. The Comet 4C had the Comet 4B's longer fuselage and the longer wings and extra fuel tanks of the original Comet 4, which gave it a longer range than the 4B. Ordered by Kuwait Airways, Middle East Airlines, Misrair, and Sudan Airways, it was the most popular Comet variant. In 1959 BOAC began shifting its Comets from transatlantic routes and released the Comet to associate companies, making the Comet 4's ascendancy as a premier airliner brief. In November 1965, BOAC retired its Comet 4s from revenue service. Other operators continued commercial passenger flights with the Comet until 1981. On 14 March 1997 a Comet 4C serial XS-235 and named Canopus, which had been acquired by the British Ministry of Technology and used for radio, radar and avionics trials, made the last documented production Comet flight. According to de Havilland's chief test pilot John Cunningham, who had flown the prototype's first flight, representatives from American manufacturers such as Boeing and Douglas privately disclosed that if de Havilland had not experienced the Comet's pressurization problems first, it would have happened to them. Aeronautical engineering firms were quick to respond to the Comet's commercial advantages and technical flaws alike. Other aircraft manufacturers learned from, and profited by, the hard-earned lessons embodied by de Havilland's Comet. In response to the Comet tragedies, Manufacturers also developed ways of pressurization testing, often going so far as to explore rapid depressurization. Subsequent fuselage skins were of a greater thickness than the skin of the Comet. Comet 1X. 2 RCAF Comet 1 as were rebuilt with heavier gauge skins to a Comet 2 standard for the fuselage, and renamed Comet 1X. Comet 1XB. 4 Comet 1 as were upgraded to a 1XB standard with a reinforced fuselage structure and oval windows. Comet 2X. Limited to a single Comet MK-1 powered by four Rolls-Royce Avon 502 turbojet engines and used as a development aircraft for the Comet 2. Comet C-2. 
Eight Comet IIs originally destined for the civil market were completed for the RAF and assigned to No. 216 Squadron. The Comet III, which flew for the first time on 19 July 1954, was a Comet II lengthened by 15 feet 5 in and powered by Avon M502 engines developing 10,000 lbf. The Comet IV was a further improvement on the stretched Comet III with even greater fuel capacity. The design had progressed significantly from the original Comet I, growing by 18 feet 6 in and typically seating 74 to 81 passengers compared to the Comet I's 36 to 44. The original operators of the early Comet I and the Comet IIA were BOAC, Union Aeromaritime de Transport and Air France. When the redesigned Comet IV entered service, it was flown by customers BOAC, Aerolinas Argentinas, and East African Airways, while the Comet 4B variant was operated by customers B and Olympic Airways and the Comet 4C model was flown by customers Kuwait Airways, Mexicana, Middle East Airlines, Misrare Airlines and Sudan Airways. Pilot error was blamed for the type's first fatal accident, which occurred during takeoff at Karachi, Pakistan, on 3 March 1953 and involved a Canadian Pacific Airlines Comet 1A. Three fatal Comet 1 crashes due to structural problems, specifically BOAC Flight 783 on 2 May 1953, BOAC Flight 781 on 10 January 1954 and South African Airways Flight 201 on 8 April 1954, led to the grounding of the entire Comet fleet. After design modifications were implemented, Comet services resumed on October 4, 1958 with Comet 4s. Pilot error resulting in controlled flight into terrain was blamed for five fatal Comet 4 accidents, and Aerolinas Argentina's crash near Asuncion, Paraguay, on 27 August 1959, Aerolinas Argentina's Flight 322 at Campinas near Sao Paulo, Brazil, on 23 November 1961, United Arab Airlines Flight 869 in Thailand's Khao Yai Mountains on 19 July 1962, a Saudi Arabian government crash in the Italian Alps on 20 March 1963, and United Arab Airlines Flight 844 in Tripoli, Libya, on 2 January 1971. The Dan Air de Havilland Comet crash in Spain's Montseny Range on 3 July 1970 was attributed to navigational errors by air traffic control and pilots. Nine comets, including Comet 1s operated by BOAC and Union Aeromaritime de Transport and Comet 4s flown by Aerolinas Argentinas, Dan Air, Malaysian Airlines and United Arab Airlines, were irreparably damaged during takeoff or landing accidents that were survived by all on board. A hangar fire damaged a No. 192 Squadron RAF Comet 2R beyond repair on 13 September 1957, and three Middle East Airlines Comet 4Cs were destroyed by Israeli troops at Beirut, Lebanon, on 28 December 1968. The only complete remaining Comet 1, a Comet 1XB with the registration GAPAS, the very last Comet 1 built, is displayed at the RAF Museum Cosford. The sole surviving Comet fuselage with the original square-shaped windows, part of a Comet 1A registered FBGNX, has undergone restoration and is on display at the de Havilland Aircraft Museum in Hertfordshire, England. The last Comet to fly, Comet 4C Canopus, is kept in running condition at Bruntingthorpe Aerodrome, where fast taxi runs are regularly conducted. The Comet emerges on 1949 flight article on the unveiling of the Comet prototype.